Today, folks, we got to talk about the incredible sales of Mario Wonder. That is right. Mario Wonder is lighting the world ablaze with the amount of people playing the game right now. setting all-time records for Mario game sales during launch. In fact, especially when considering the Nintendo Switch itself, Mario Wonder is ablazing a fresh, never-ran-before trail. It's pretty awesome, and we're going to be giving you a lot of sales updates in today's video. We also have a smidge of a potential update on Nintendo Switch Shoe, just a little tiny one. It's not our headline today, but we're gonna throw that towards the end just so you guys have all of the latest on Nintendo Switch 2. But before we dive in, I just wanna remind you that, hey, we're on our road to 150,000 subscribers here in the spooky month of October. So I would appreciate it if you go ahead and drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in this content and future updates on Nintendo news, especially the Nintendo Switch 2, and go ahead and ring-a-ling that ding-a-ling to be notified of all future uploads. All right, folks, what are we talking about? Well, we got to focus in on Mario Wonder. You know what, editor? Cue that gameplay. Oh, boy, this is going to be pretty cool. Okay, he put up a trailer. What are you... Look, sometimes the editor doesn't always do what I tell him to. But, hey, Mario Wonder is just wrecking the world right now. We all know, or if you didn't know, I mean, if you watch Nintendo Prime's YouTube channel, you would already know that Mario Wonder actually debuted at number two in the UK over the weekend, just behind Spider-Man 2. But, oh boy, that doesn't actually tell the full story. We won't have exact sales figures here in North America uh, pretty much until Nintendo gives it to us, and even an idea of if it was the best seller in the United States until the middle of November, according to used to be called the MPD, now it's called something else. I don't know, we'll talk about that in the future. But we do finally know a lot more about how much Mario Wonder has been dominating during launch weekend. According to Nintendo themselves, Mario Wonder was the best-selling game in the whole of Europe. Though, notably, Nintendo of Europe doesn't actually give us exact sales figures. So I don't really have any numbers to show you, but this was backed up by several countries' individual sales charts showing Mario Wonder in the lead. And we have to remember that Nintendo of Europe does not provide digital sales data. So all of this is just based on physical sales alone, while, whereas some of the other games on the charts do include digital data. But I didn't really want to just run this story if all we have was this neat little nugget from Europe when... I actually wanted some exact sales figures, and those exact sales figures are in from Japan, and we knew this was going to happen. We just didn't know what the numbers were going to look like, and today, those numbers are in. Super Mario Bros. Wonder literally broke records in its debut just in physical sales in Japan at 600 68,634 units. This makes it the fastest selling and best selling at launch Mario game of the entire generation of Switch. The next closest was Super Mario Odyssey at 462,000. That's right, over 200,000 ahead of Odyssey itself during launch. While by physical sales, it's not technically the fastest selling Mario ever, New Super Mario Bros. Wii and New Super Mario Bros. on DS both debuted at just over 900,000 units in Japan. Back in those days, games were only available physically for Nintendo. We don't know the digital sales in Japan right now, but it is reasonable to think that at least a third of all sales were probably digital, which would mean that Mario Wonder topped 900k again and might have even crossed 1 million. However, Nintendo's going to have to confirm that in their financial reports sometime in 2024. The one coming up in November isn't going to actually be including October. So we're going to have to wait till 2024 to actually know how much it's sold. And again, we might not get launch numbers. We'll just get lifetime to date numbers. But hey, it is what it is. Now, in comparison, Spider-Man 2 in Japan debuted at number two, moving 77,348 units. And by most metrics for PlayStation games, this is just considered an okay launch, not a spectacular one. But this is, again, just based on prior launches of other games on PlayStation. And unfortunately, the real loser of the weekend when it came at least to Japan was Sonic. Uh, Sonic Superstars last week, like the entire week from launch through the weekend. So it had even more days on the market 
only got it to debut at number nine in Japan, moving 4,128 units. And you want to know how disappointing that might be for Sega? That's barely ahead of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at number 10, a game that came out in 2018 and moved 3,615 units last week. So, yeah, I obviously don't know what the Sonic Superstar sales are worldwide, but at least in Japan, it looks like Japan really only wanted Mario this week when it came to platformers. Now, moving on, typically a mega release like this would have caused a massive surge in Switch sales, at least it has over the course of the Switch's generation, but instead they actually stayed pretty steady with how they've been going for most of the year. There was roughly 63,000 in total Switch sales, with 52,000 of those being the Nintendo Switch OLED model. There was a bump a couple of weeks ago when the Mario Red OLED dropped, and Switch did top 100,000 units that week to be fair. But these bumps are still smaller than games that launched with smaller numbers than this. Essentially, the, the, the this kind of backs Nintendo's entire thought process, they've said all year, that the Switch has essentially hit market saturation, and expecting huge bumps in console sales from game releases are mostly a thing of the past beyond special editions, which are you know, going to get people to buy a second or third Switch, which again is something Shintaro Furukawa has said was their goal for this fiscal year was to get people to buy a second and third Switch. I think they realize that, you know what, Switch is pretty much topped out in terms of how, what it's going to get in peak sales in a year. So now they just want to sort of maintain until they're ready for the next platform, which is exactly what they seem to be doing. After all, Dougie Bowser told us just last week that, hey, you know what? One of our goals was to maintain in the last year of Switch, unlike prior platforms, and it seems to be what they're doing. So I'm just throwing out there that this does appear to be part of Nintendo's strategy, something they've technically referenced publicly now, thanks to Doug Bowser, and it seems to be going pretty swimmingly for them. Now, we do need to talk about that next system, though, very, very briefly, because it appears that indie developers, and not just like the big name ones that would be really tight with Nintendo, but, you know, just even smaller indie developers might be getting their hands on Switch 2 dev kits. Now, we got this information from Dr. 81 and if you want the full explanation and context, be sure to go watch his video because he does an amazing breakdown of this information, where it came from, all of that. It's basically from like a LinkedIn profile that shows a certain studio, and this studio has produced a bunch of smaller indie games, but almost all of them have come to Nintendo Switch. And they, on his profile, he lists an unannounced Unreal Engine 5 project, which none of their games, at least seemingly, use Unreal Engine 5 right now. And that they're actually working on to-be-announced games for a groundbreaking new hardware. Now, there's a little debate on if this TBA groundbreaking new hardware has been updated or not recently. No one really seems to know if that was you know, still what it said back in 2018 and it's just never been updated or if it was more updated more recently. It's really hard at times to track updates on this stuff. So I'm not gonna sit here and say like, this is definitive proof that indie developers have dev kits, but I would say that we have now heard that some indie devs were invited to the Gamescom demo out in you know Germany when they were showing off you know Breath of the Wild in 4K with super fast load times and obviously showing off the Matrix Awakens with ray tracing. So if any developers are being invited to events like that, it would be reasonable to presume that they probably could have ordered dev kits and maybe they're starting to arrive. I don't know, just throwing that out there that hey, you combine that with this, it is seeming likely the closer we get to 2024 that indie developers might start beginning you know dev kits, which when that starts to happen, you know, it makes you feel like the system's coming pretty soon. But again, this is all based on presumptions. It's not necessarily based on hard facts. This is some evidence, of course, but not a hard fact. Because again, we can't verify when these profiles were updated, specifically when it talks about groundbreaking new hardware. Because if this was listed in 2018, that could have literally been PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series, right? So uh, we're just giving you the full context of of that because I couldn't verify when that update occurred. Dotre doesn't really go over when, if he found out when that update occurred, I think he just assumes it was recent or maybe he knows it was recent, but he didn't really show it as a recent edit. It is what it is, folks. I looked into the profile and I can't seem to figure it out. So 
Whatever, go watch Doc Trey's video for the full context and let me know your thoughts on this down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rubblejance from Nintendo Prime. We're starting to get towards the end of Spooky Month, creeping one day closer to Halloween. What I want to know is how many of you guys are dressing up for Halloween, even if you're just handing out candy. Maybe you're going trick-or-treating yourself. Maybe you have Halloween parties. And if you are going to dress up, what are you dressing up as? As for me, oh, I'm wearing a Halloween costume. You're going to see it on our special Halloween stream next week, but no hints from me of what I'm dressing as. All right, folks, I'll catch you in the next video.